Thank you to The Ridge for sponsoring this video and sending me the Ripstop Commuter Backpack. One of the things I like best is the hidden YKK zippers for a clean look. There's also multiple external and internal pockets for iPads, GoPros, snacks, and drinks, whatever you need when you're on the go. There's even a soft pocket for your glasses. I really appreciate the large padded laptop pocket. There's even a hidden RFID blocking pocket. Thank you again to The Ridge for sponsoring this video. Use my custom URL as well as a unique code Lanky to save 10% at checkout. Hey, it's your favorite thick boy, Jason. Here for kind of a serious video. So the question is, do you have to use CPAP for the rest of your life? Can your sleep apnea be cured? Now there's kind of two answers for this. Uh, they're both long. So let's start with the long one. The first answer is, I'm often sponsored by a DME company online that sells CPAP equipment. So of course not, you're stuck on CPAP for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's the screw around answer. The real answer is a little more nuanced. Forgive me for the terrible analogy, but it's actually a really good way to answer this question. Consider this, is it possible to become a professional baseball player? Of course it's possible. Is it likely? Not really. Pretty, pretty difficult. I think I would answer the question of, can you ever get off of CPAP? Can your CPAP be cured? I think we have to answer it in the same way. Of course you can, it's just not very likely. The most realistic way of not having to use CPAP, of curing your sleep apnea, and I don't even know if this is for the long term, is really one way, and that is simply losing weight. Girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. That said, does losing weight guarantee that you can get off of CPAP? Does that cure your sleep apnea? No. We have to consider one thing that is like the most important thing, and that is what is causing your sleep apnea. If you have a uvula that is massive and falling down into your airway, will losing weight help with that? No, of course not. If you have a massive tongue and your jaw falls back into your airway, will losing weight cure your sleep apnea? No. If you have a ton of fatty tissue in your upper airway and you lose weight, will that cure your sleep apnea? Maybe. Now, why do I say maybe? It's kind of messed up, right? You don't really know. The reason we don't know is if you have a lot of tissue that's in your upper airway that's, that's causing you to not be able to breathe at night, you've now stretched that tissue out. That tissue is gonna be flappy and flabby. Now, if you lose a bunch of weight, if you have elasticity in that tissue and you lose weight, now it's gonna shrink back. It's gonna not crowd your airway anymore. In that case, you're cured. But what happens if you lose, you're here and you lose a bunch of weight so you lost the weight, but now the tissue is just kind of saggy and it's still sagging in your airway. Well, now you still have sleep apnea and you didn't really reach your goal of getting off of CPAP, but you did make yourself healthier and a healthier weight, hopefully, assuming you did it right. So I would answer the question with this. Using CPAP and sleeping throughout the night and having a healthy sleep architecture throughout the night is gonna make you feel much better during the day. You're gonna have a lot of energy throughout the day you can use this energy for good. You can use it to take long walks, maybe do some fitness training, maybe some resistance training as well. And in doing so, you might be able to get off of CPAP. You might cure your sleep apnea. Worst case scenario, you're in better cardiovascular shape and your musculoskeletal system is in much better shape. So I would always encourage you to get healthy. Having the goal of never having to use CPAP anymore and curing your sleep apnea is potentially one of those things where it, it's, it's a difficult goal to set because you don't really have much control over it. I will say that statistically, if you're younger, your skin tends to have more elasticity. That said, my grandmother, who was in her 70s at the time, lost a bunch of weight, got off of CPAP. She was tested and her, her levels were in, within normal ranges. Though she's a known liar. Also, I have a friend from work, my friend Brian, who is an RT. One of his friends, who's also an RT at work, she's a viewer of this channel. Thanks, Elizabeth. I am told that she was on CPAP. She lost a bunch of weight, got retested, and now no longer has to use her CPAP machine. And to that, I say, good for you. Hell yeah, Elizabeth. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's just the, the reality of it. If you have ever been on CPAP and you no longer need it, you tested negative for sleep apnea, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm super curious and interested to hear what happened or what you did to, to no longer need CPAP or to cure your sleep apnea. I'm also curious of those who lost a lot of weight and were not able to get rid of CPAP and still have sleep apnea. So do me a favor, leave a comment. Please leave a thumbs up on this video, unless you're a goose, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. 
If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, I would appreciate you doing so. Check out my Amazon affiliate link down below. Check out my website, axgsleepdiagnostics.com if you have any questions about your sleep therapy. And lastly, buy some Mass Bright because your mask stinks. Thanks for watching. Bye. Everyone's too embarrassed to say it. Your mask stinks really bad. Get some Mass Bright at massbright.com or Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy, to Ray Troutman, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, and Mona Swearingen. And thank you to my other level Patreon supporters as well as my YouTube members.